right, here we are. We're back. Um, Bill Goldberg. I mean, you've kind of done it all over 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 your over your lifespan. It's kind of impressive. I mean, wrestler, uh, actor, football player. Now you've got uh, this new company you've launched. You've been all over the world. Um, I'm a car guy too. Oh yeah, twenty five. You have twenty five cars. My buddy was just telling me, huge Mopar guy. Oh yes, yes. So what's the, yeah, what's it's an honor? And, it's an honor and a privilege to be on with you, brother. I've been uh, a fan uh, from afar for a long time, and uh, yeah, you know, I've been lucky enough to do a couple cool things. Uh, uh, I, I never imagined that I would have been doing after I uh, didn't fulfill my dream of playing in the NFL <laughs> for very for more than like fifteen minutes, but. You, I uh, thought my life was over then, but uh, yeah. unbeknownst to me, it only it only had just begun. So you, I mean, you grew up what in, in Tulsa? Yes, sir. Did you only play football? No, I played football, baseball. Yeah. Uh, I dabbled in in basketball, but uh, that didn't last very long by any stretch. Uh, I, I fouled more people than points that I scored. <laughs> but, um, you know. Uh, yeah, man, I've just been a baseball and a football guy my whole life, trying yeah. to follow my brother's footsteps. Got two older brothers who played at the University of Minnesota. And, uh, man, I just wanted to be an NFL guy. That was that was a dream of mine. How did you, uh, how'd you end up at Georgia? <laughs> well, um, uh, Barry Switzer, uh, unfortunately, was coaching uh, a team that was two hours from my house. So if he would have been coaching anywhere else, I would have gone there. But yep. he was coaching at OU. Yep. Um, I, I was thinking about going to, to Alabama, but then Bear Bryant passed away. And my great uncle was good friends with Dooley. And he introduced me to Dooley. And uh, I, the, the rest is kind of history, man. I mean, I was lucky enough to, been, to be recruited by a lot of people. And, you know, you take your five trips back in the day and sure. and uh, your couple other ones that weren't known. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I had a great time, man. I wouldn't have changed it for the world. The SEC was awesome. You know that. You were, yep. you were advanced. And, yep. uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, it was just – if I had to rewrite it, I wouldn't have changed it to it. Really? really would have. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, I wanted to go to UT. I wanted to go to Texas. Um, but – I remember, co I remember walking in Coach Aker's office, and he gave me like an ultimatum in that uh, I had to decide whether I was signing right before there. I left the door. Yeah, and uh, that didn't work too well with me and my father. So <laughs> I'm sure um, I ended up in Georgia. There you go. Um, what do you think about the new mega conferences happening right now in college football? Oh Christ, man! You know it's kind of nuts. I don't know. Man. And at, at the end of the day, any opportunity. I think it's, it's a great opportunity for certain schools, no question about it, but any opportunity for the players, for the kids, student athletes, if you can even call them a student athlete anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's like it's like the USFL, it's like the Arena League. Any yeah. opportunity for these kids, man, I, I'm for the NIL, the, uh, NIL stuff yep. or whatever yep. that was called. Yep. I'm not a big fan of that by any stretch of imagination, but again, it's a way to get these kids paid. Um, but now they can do it legally from, <laughs> from, you know, from a love. It's a weird deal. What do you think about it? I mean, I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. To be I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. Um, I was against it. You know, I think we're 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 going down this wormhole with this NIL stuff. And these kids are getting paid, you know, millions of dollars. And you, and you're and the thing about it is like these are unknown quantities. I mean, so you know, oh, yeah. like these kids get out of high school and you know, some are, some still are growing. Some still have hit puberty. Some are going to cash out. So you're, you're looking at all these donors and, and, and sponsors and stuff. And they're, they're paying millions of dollars for literally a 17 year old kid. And it's just, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's just going down a, a bad path. I feel like. I kind of, I kind of liken it to the salary cap, you know, yeah. the rookie salary cap deal. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I played when it, I mean, like 150 years ago. But uh, I remember when they lifted that salary cap and then the rookies came in and they were instantly part of the team. And they were yep. people that were paying, paying so much money up front that vets are pissed off. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, the owners protect them so much because, you know, they got so much invested in them. To. Oh, and by the way, they haven't played yet. So yep. it's a weird deal, man. Um, it is weird. College right? becomes something that's that's – you know, they, did, they don't even talk about education anymore. 
Oh no, so, these kids aren't. These kids, I mean, they're not. I doubt they're even going to class. I mean, you give a 17, 18 year old a million dollars and say, "Hey, you're our starting quarterback at Texas <laughs> or, or wherever." They're like, "Well, okay, uh, that's I'm just that's that's all I'm gonna do then." Yeah, no doubt. I the mean, hell, the you, hell was school. No one to work their ass off. Really. No, no, no. And I mean, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of pissed off donors and people here in the next couple of years when they're paying out all this money. And then these kids don't produce, and then you never look at the coaches being like, "Hey, this is on you." So yep. it's it's uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But I mean, it's it is what it is. So you you went yep. to I get caught in the field though. I mean, you got OU and you got Texas becoming part of the SEC. SEC is tough enough. Yeah. Um. Obviously, everybody wants as much money as humanly possible for their athletic program. Yep. But. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't really know how to pass judgment on it. I mean, I, I live out here in Texas now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not on Georgia soil anymore. So I'm real close to UT, about an hour and a half away. And um, I mean, they, it's a huge buzz. There's no question about it. And sure. for the teams that are coming in, um, I can imagine they have one opinion, but the teams that are already there and they've entrenched themselves in the SEC for that period of time and they have the the uh, rivalries, it's just, it's a weird deal. And it's, it's just all about money. Yeah. Um, I mean, things aren't looking good for Vandy. I mean, that, that, that schedule is just getting worse and worse for them as, as we get down this shit hole. Yeah. You know, I wasn't going to, I had to wear the Georgia hat. But yeah, yeah sure. man. Um, you know, Vandy, I don't know. Vandy's up and down. Um, I remember when, I remember playing like 15 plays against them mm -hmm. my senior year, and I got, mm -hmm. Two fumble recoveries, an interception, and like, I, don't, I, I don't know. But, but you know, they, they really come to prominence as a, as a, as a baseball team. And my yeah. son, who's 16, who's, a, who's an aspiring baseball slash football player in, in mm -hmm. college, um, he's had his eye on Vandy for a long time. So Yeah, um, Vandy, Tim, Tim Corbin's done an unbelievable job there. He, he got there whenever I first got there in about 2001. And you know mm -hmm. what what he's done over the last twenty years is incredible. I mean, it's it's a they just they print they print first rounders there. Oh, it's amazing! It's yeah. amazing. And uh, a couple of years ago, I turned it on, and, and Rocker was pitching. Yeah. And I played against, or I played, yeah, kind of against his it's, dad. His dad, you know, at Auburn. Yeah. So uh, he was a good dude, and it's it's it really dates you to see uh, the son of a, a former guy that you played against yeah. go out there and get. Do whatever, but it's, yeah, we're it's not we're weird. not we're not getting any younger. That's for damn sure. No, that's for sure. So you went. So you then you went eleventh eleventh round to the Rams, nineteen ninety draft. How many? How many? How many? That's back when. They, how many rounds did they have then? <laughs> I think there were eleven. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I was almost the uh, the, the what it was the three hundred ninety ninth of the last uh -huh. fuck picked in the NFL draft or whatever, but. Um, did you did you have an idea like were there did they have did they have did they have pro days and stuff was that all still happening then or was it just not for D lineman not for D -lineman. Suck, like you know not not for middle of the road or guys I mean I was six three two seventy five two eighty yeah um you know and I got to the Rams and I'm backing up a dude who's six six one three forty so playing nose guard in the NFL was pretty tough I didn't get a lot of accolades as far as you know, going into the draft by any stretch of imagination. Did you think um, you were going to get drafted at all? I thought I would be drafted in the first freaking day. And hmm. so, um, you know, that's that's wishful thinking. But yeah. I think they had the first six, six rounds that first day. Uh -huh. And uh, I finally had to just take off and go somewhere with my dad. And then mm -hmm. lo and behold, the phone rings right when I take off. So. That's not, that's um, it was a dream come true. Just, just to get, just to get picked, dude. It was a, it was an absolute dream of mine. So Rams, Falcons, Carolina for a hot second. Um, did you like it? Was it fun? Or was it more of a you know, in, in, in the beginning, it was fun. It would have been a lot more fun if I was better. Sure. <laughs> you know, and if I could, if I could have competed. Yeah. You know, truthfully, the the memories that I have from the NFL are, are wonderful. Yeah. Whether it was rooming with Kevin Green, whether it was being coached by uh, Jack Youngblood, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was being cut on the field in full pads by by Robinson, 
you know, the Rams and, you know, the Glanville years and the Falcons and yeah, yeah. carrying Dion's bags. And I, yeah. had a, I had a great time. I really did. The NFL was different you know, for me. I mean, yeah, it was different. I mean, it was, it was a lot more lawless back in the day. Yep. Um, I, I, my, my locker mates, I had Pierce Holt on one side and I had Jumpy Gathers on the other. Wow. So, I mean, that in itself was an unbelievable uh, opportunity just to, to learn about the underbelly of the NFL of these sure. people. It was, it was a, it, hey, it was a dream come true for me. I, I uh, like I said, I didn't have an abundance of talent. I did work my ass off, but, you know, I made it to the big show for a short period of time and it opened up doors for me. Yeah, not not. I mean, not be not many people do it. I mean, it's it's hard to to go, you know, high school, college, NFL, and stick around for a while. It's not, you know, it's it's not for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. And and like I said, man, especially guys that were, were middle of the roaders like me that uh, didn't have any special ability, just worked his ass off. So, so you're done, so you're done with the NFL. You know, you get into lifting, MMA, and then I I read, is this true that you, Lex Luger Lex Luger and Sting recruited you? Well, I I work when I played for the Falcons. I'd work out at a, at a gym in Atlanta called Main Event Fitness, uh-huh. and it was owned by those two guys. Okay, and you know, playing at Georgia and playing at the Falcons, you you know, during those, that time, the '80s and the '90s in Atlanta. I mean, yeah, if you walked outside on a Friday or Saturday night, you're gonna bump into one of these guys. Sure, and so. I rubbed shoulders with a lot of the guy, a lot of wrestling guys when I was at the Falcons and mm-hmm. uh, became good friends with a lot of them. And, 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 you know, they always tried to push me to do it. Uh, it was something that I never aspired to do by any stretch of imagination. Yeah. You know, football was my thing. And I was embarrassed to go out and, you know, be a wrestler. Mm-hmm. And uh, then my accountant called me one day and said, dude, uh, you might want to get off your ass and go get a job. <laughs> so then it became a, a possibility and I, I you know I just I put everything that I had learned um, on the football field and preparing for the NFL prepared for you know playing in any kind of level of a game to the wrestling world and uh, I'd like to think that I did a, a fairly good job of kind of transferring over well I mean you just stopped in February so it must have worked out it's a hell of a long career <laughs> Yeah, I'm 55, and I did stop in February. Uh, there are little rumblings about me doing something again, but you know, in the wrestling world, you're never really retired until you're dead. I think. Yeah, so. yeah. What was the what was the what was the hardest part about getting into that world and you know figuring it out? I mean, was it just the the moves? I mean, was it was it more physical than football? I mean, what 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 was the hardest part for you? Honestly, I'll give you the best analogy I can give. give okay. you. I've given it all the old football guys. Were you in a fraternity when you were at Vandy? Uh-uh. Okay, so <clears throat> as a football player, yeah. walking into a frat party yeah. in college. Okay. That's how I felt walking into the okay. into the wrestling locker room. Uh-huh. So that was my biggest obstacle. My biggest yeah. obstacle was, hey, man, I could line up, and there was nothing they could do to me getting out of an NFL camp to make sure. me quit. There yeah. just wasn't. Yeah. Um, I had a good work ethic. I, I – I'm trying to be a perfectionist and I'm a martial artist and I mm-hmm. tried to combine a lot of different things that were hot at the moment and put it into one package, not speak for six months and go out there and rip guys' faces off. Yeah. Um, I thought that would work. And, uh, but, you know, I'm not going to say it was an easy transition by any stretch of imagination because being a professional wrestler is like being a football player and a rock star mm-hmm. built into one. Yeah. You know, you're, you're on the road 200 days a year. Yep. So it, it's it's tough on your body, but um, I'd say that was the biggest obstacle, and I, I still deal with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the same mind mind wavelength as as the guys in the locker room. So it's just I'm kind of built out of a different cloth. The, I mean, the, yeah, I mean the physical part, but I mean you watch it, and like there's guys that are just gifted on the mic, and they're entertainers. And did you have to develop that skill a little bit, or were you just were you always kind of naturally outgoing, and that kind of came easy to you? I've never developed it. Yeah, still working on this, it. To this, to this day, I'm yeah. still working on it. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a. I like to say that my my character is an extension of myself, just ramped up to ten. Sure. So all I got to do is go out and be me. Mm-hmm. Um, I take things personally sometimes, and wrestling is a fictitious world. Yeah. And so if I get a boo here and if I get one there, then I, you know it kind of pisses me off and goes right to the, right to the heart. But. Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, yeah, that's uh, being a, I like to say rock is an entertainer and I'm yeah. a competitor. Got it. Right? Yeah. So that's just the huge difference between the two of them. Uncut with Jay Cutler is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to me talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy and you can save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 27 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive casualty insurance companies and affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. So you were WCW, and then you. When did it go? When did it get to WWE? WCW went under. I think Ted Turner went on a a trip over to South Africa or something, and then then uh, Time Warner sold it out from under him, I believe. And uh, Vince purchased it. My contract was still good for another year and a half, and it was guaranteed. Okay. And I think Vince was paying like 50 cents on the dollar or something like that for everybody else's contract. So, you know, I sat home. Did anyone ever envision like it, it becoming as big as it is now? As far as, you know, the, the WWE or the wrestling yeah. business? I mean, the whole thing. I mean, it, I mean, it was big. I mean, there was big, some big names, but like, it just seems like it's an empire now. Yeah, but I mean, back in the 90s, solidified it. We, yeah. You know, uh, wrestling was kicking Monday Night Football's ass. Yeah. Monday Night Football changed their time slot. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Dennis Miller to come on and try to steal fans from the wrestling. World. I mean, <laughs> the the fact is, you can't you you couldn't have beaten the Monday Night Wars. I don't yeah. care if it was NFL or who it was. Yeah. Unless you had a hockey game on and all they did was fight for three periods. Sure. Um, but I'm I'm surprised, but I'm not. I mean, look at how Rock and look how Cena have been able to transfer over to Hollywood. And, yeah. You know, it's a it's a it's a big marketing it's a big marketing empire with big, massive, physically fit dudes who, and chicks now. Yeah. Um, it's very entertaining. And it's, it, it, hey man, and it's a, it's a male soap opera. That's, that, my, one, of my, one of my best friends um, lives in South Carolina, Stephen Bright, and I hope he's watching this whenever we air this. But I mean, he, I tell him all the time, I'm like, and that's exactly how I phrase it. I'm like, it's just a male soap opera. And he, he and he fights me. He's like, "No, it's real." And I'm like, oh, "Yeah, there's real parts to it. You guys are throwing each other around, but people get invested in the stories. Like that's what it is." No question, no question. And that, you know, that's that's kind of been partly my downfall throughout the years. Is I, I just go out and try to smash people. Yeah. I really don't have too much of a story. Now I brought my son with me. He got attacked, and then I got some some revenge and mm-hmm. you know that was that was a nice little storyline but you know for the most part it was Goldberg comes in wrecks people and he leaves yeah and that I mean, gets old after a while you know but. well it, it got old it did but like you just kept winning so like that was the cool part that was then and this is now <laughs> <laughs> who when you first when you first got in like who was who was the main guy in the lock in the locker room like who who controlled everything one of, one of our good buddies that works uh, here at Outsider. Uh, Ron and Don, Ron Harris and Donnie, Ronnie and Donnie. And he mm-hmm. said, you know, back then he's like, you know, Undertaker, like he ruled the roost. Like he told everyone, he kept everyone in line. Who was the guy on, on your guys' side that did that? When you first got in WCW, you know, there were so many outlaws. Uh, uh-huh. It was tough. There's, Sting was, you know, the he was kind of the unknown leader or the yeah. un, unnamed leader. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's no way he could have wrangled Scott Steiner and Rick yeah. Steiner. Yeah. Right. So if people wanted to go off the rails, good luck. Nobody's going to, I don't, I mean, I love Taker to death, but yeah. I don't know if Taker would have been able to deal with him. You know, so, uh, so I mean, are these dude, guys like that. You yeah. Know? I mean, you, I mean you, you, you guys would have a plan going into the ring and then there's just some dudes that are like, you know what the hell with this, I'm doing my own thing. 
Not necessarily. Um, that's not what I mean. What I mean yeah. is, you know, it's trying to wrangle guys in the locker room. Oh, yeah. Um, trying to be an influence on them. You know, uh-huh. a guy like Scott Steiner, you can't influence him. It's impossible. Really? It's impossible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's impossible. He's a great dude. No question yeah. about it. He's just his own. He beats to his own drum. Got it. You know, so WCW was kind of run by the by the inmates. WWE mm-hmm. or WWF at the time was a different entity. Okay. You know, it was a corporate structure deal, and we were we were the outlaws. Was it hard to uh, become buddies with these guys because you guys were competing each other against against, against each other day, night night in night out? Well, it was weird for me, man, because you know I came from the NFL. I, yeah. I, I I was breaching a door that they try to keep padlocked um, and and keep people out. Uh-huh. Um, and and I'm coming in, you know, stealing somebody's job who's sure. aspired to be that person for 25, 30 years. Yep. And I don't have the appreciation that people had for it when I got into it. Now that's grown exponentially. There's no doubt. But it, mm-hmm. but in the beginning, I I looked at it straight as a business, and it was tough. You know, I mean, you're a quarterback. You're yep. you're, you're in the NFL for a long period of time, and people are hunting for your job every freaking day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but I mean, it was. I don't know. Like I said, take the business side out of it. There were some men down there that that WCW that mm-hmm. made it absolutely an unbelievable setting scenario uh, stories. I mean, it was a, I, I would, I would, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I really wouldn't. I mean, it was the best time in wrestling, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just kind of part of it and learning throughout the whole process. Now, there were a lot of people who obviously told me the wrong things and would steer me down the wrong path intentionally, <laughs> you know, to see me fail. Yeah. But, I mean, you kind of get that everywhere you go. But oh, I, I think there was a lot more of that in wrestling than anywhere else. When did you know? Well, two questions. When did you know that, hey, you know, I could stick around? And was there ever a point where you're like, you know what, this might not be for me? Um, I knew it was I knew it was for me when Colorado Springs uh, against Raven and his flock when I was at WCW. And uh-huh. the, it was for the U.S. championship. It was the first title that I went up and tried to win and, and, and I won it and the reaction was pretty cool. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what, maybe this, maybe this is the way to go, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, it's luck. It truly is. You're in the right place at the right time. And I had Hogan and you know, the, the big boys down there to, to kind of show me the ropes. Yeah. Um, I wasn't as naive as everyone thought that I was. And so mm-hmm. I didn't listen to everything by any yeah. stretch, but I pick and ch- picked and choose, uh, you know, the, the advice to follow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, then, I mean, I mean, 96 to 2002, you're WCW, and then, and then you went to Japan. How'd that happen? I thought, you know, I, I, when, when I – in the beginning when I prepped to be a wrestler, I would search matches that – people really didn't know about. I, yeah. I, I looked up, I looked at a lot of coverage from Japan and American wrestlers traveling, traveling to Japan. Um, that was the style of wrestling that I preferred. It was a more physical style. It was a more yeah. of a fight than uh-huh. it was anything else. But at that time, when I was studying, it seemed to be the, the guys who were the guys were the ones who wrestled in Japan. And that was a dream of mine. I thought that I would make it that if I could go to Japan and, and garner a big stadium show, then I, I'd made it. And it was a dream come true. I got to do it a number of times and, and uh, wouldn't have changed it. I mean, did you stay over there for the whole, like, two years? Oh, hell no. No. Uh, no. A matter of fact, one time, one time I can tell you that I was doing a, a movie called Looney Tunes Back in Action. I was in San Fran. No, we were doing it in L.A., and then I took a, I took a charter to San Fran. Met Rick Steiner, who was my opponent in Japan. Mm-hmm. We flew to Japan. We flew to Tokyo, landed in Tokyo, got on a helicopter, helicoptered to Osaka, uh-huh. landed in Osaka, got in a van, changed clothes in the van, got to the venue, wrestled, went back to the room, and left the next morning. Damn. So you guys are in and out. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Before jet lag even hit you. 
<laughs> and then 2016, back to WWE. Why'd you come back? I, I still ask myself the same question. Um, you know, I, I didn't think I was ever going to do it again. And yeah. I had, you know, my wife and I fortunately had a little boy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was about six at the time. And he'd always ask me about, hey, daddy, you know, yeah. he'd look on yeah. I would not show him any of the stuff. I kind of yeah. repressed wrestling at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave on a very good note at WWE my first year there. Yeah. And I really didn't have it in my life anymore. And uh, I was promoting something at the time. And then I was in New York and I saw Brock and one thing led to another. And I'm like, you know what? My son needs to see this in real time. Sure. Um, but... I don't know. I was a hundred back then when I came back. I'm 150 now. <laughs> you wonder, you know, the biggest dichotomy was that, or conundrum was, you know, do you come back and ruin your legacy, you know, because yeah. you're older and you're slower and you're not as strong as you were and you're not, mm -hmm. you know, but you're able to give that to your son yeah. in real time. Yeah. Um, so, eh, you know, it's pretty if cool. I had to do it over again, what I have done, and I, I really don't know, but... I, I'd like to think that I provided some pretty cool times for my boy. Oh, I'm sure you did. I'm sure. I'm guarantee that. And then, I mean, and then you you had a show on ABC, Goldberg's. How did how the hell did that happen? <coughs> it was it's funny. Awesome. I'm the only Goldberg. I'm the only Goldberg on the cast that's really <laughs> named Goldberg. Uh huh. I go I go to set and there's Goldberg on every one of the chairs, and I, I want to sit in every one of them, but yeah. only one of them's. Uh, and on the show, I'm not a Goldberg, which is yeah. quite ironic, but. Yeah, everybody thought that show was was about me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, I just was lucky enough to be a part of it. And, you know, who knows when Coach Nick will be back uh, yelling at those little kids. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, you're very, very diverse. You're kind of all over the map in a very good way, doing a lot of different things. You know, I, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it, man. I mean, going out and being that screaming guy – yeah. Uh, is is cool for a minute, but you mm -hmm. got to show range. Whether it's in life, or whether it's you know on the on the in, in television world, or whether it's in the wrestling ring, or whatever it is, man. You know, so I I like to be the complete antithesis of what people think that I am. Yeah, and uh, I showed that by being in high heels, a pink shirt, and, and dancing to flash dance on the Goldberg the last <laughs> episode I was on. But you know, I mean, if you can't make fun of yourself, dude, you know, I mean, yeah, I feel you. Not can't either. take yourself seriously. You know, I run around in my underwear in front of millions of people and act like I'm beating people up, for yeah. God's sake. So <laughs> that's a comedy in and of itself. We talked about, we talked about your car collection, but, I mean, you, I mean, you used to have the Dodge commercials. You got a ton. You got what, how many cars do you have now? Where, uh, where, where do you keep them all? Where's my wife? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm building, a, I'm building about an 18,000-square-foot monstrosity on our property here. Okay. Uh, it's about four months away from being finished. But, I, I mean, currently i got about 30, 33 cars. What are your top three um, that you like? Give me an – I mean, you got to be specific. I mean, the fastest, the coolest, the ones I like to drive, the old ones. The, the, which uh, one, has, which one has the most sentimental value to you? I have a car called the, uh, uh, it's a super, it's called a, uh, the lawman super boss. If you Googled it, is uh, it that, is the it only that, one. Is that that blue one? Light bluish color one? Yeah. I saw a picture of it. I think it's cool. Yeah. It's the only one in the world. Uh, it was campaigned in Vietnam in the early seventies. Uh, over 300,000 servicemen saw the car in wow. Vietnam. And, uh, I mean, it means a lot to me. I do a hell of a lot with the military. I used to mm. live near Pendleton and now. Uh, I live in a town that's 70% veterans. Um, it's, it, it means a lot to me to be, number one, a car guy, but to be a supporter of our military and to be able to kind of combine the two. Uh, I bought the car, ironically, when I was wrestling in Japan. I bought oh, wow. it over the phone at Barrett Jackson. Oh, wow. And got it back, and then I redid the, the tour uh, with Ford. Mm -hmm. And we went to 10 bases. Uh, I can't remember what year it was, but we went to 10 bases and took the car and took the COs down the tarmac and it's a, it's a really cool thing. It really is. I met a couple guys throughout the years whose fathers have pictures of them in Vietnam in that vehicle. No kidding. Yeah. It means a lot. It, That's it pretty really cool. does. It's a really cool deal. Hopefully I can pass it down to my son one day. I'm sure you will. That's awesome that you give back to the, to the military like that. They're, uh, 
undervalued um, in, in today's society. Man, that's an understatement. I mean, yeah. Pete, you know, I'm not going to, don't take offense to this, but people no. look at you and I, you know, celebrities, sports mm -hmm. stars, like, like idols, right? And yeah. to an extent, I get that. Sure. But as far as like a hero's concerned, like the next level, mm -hmm. um, I mean, these guys don't ever get the credit. These guys and oh. girls don't ever get the credit that they deserve to be able to defend our freedom for people that they don't even know and put yep. their lives on the line every second. I mean, it's a hell of a lot harder than playing a football game. Oh, gosh. Totally agree. And it's, uh, it's a hell of a lot more selfless, too. Un 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 yeah, no question. And there, there aren't enough things that we can do as celebrities mm -hmm. – or professional athletes to give back. So sure. anytime and every time I get the opportunity, man, we got a Purple Heart dinner coming up here soon at a place called Compadres here, August the sixth here in 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 outside of San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> I won't get to it. But no, uh, no, yeah, I, I try to do as much as I can. That's awesome. All right, let's. Uh, I know you guys have to do, but I want to talk about your the the new company. You want to talk about your new your new your new uh, investor? Let's do here? it, man. I got to yes, send a bunch of this stuff. Um, tell me about it. It's good stuff, man. I mean, let's be honest. People, well, <clears throat> I remember back in the day when I was rooming with, with the illustrious Kevin Green. Uh -huh. And supplementation consisted of eating like 30 to 40 liver tablets. <laughs> right? That was a little bit before you. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, it's, I, I've, I've used supplements my entire career, whether it be football or wrestling, and you always like to know exactly what you're putting in your body. You always sure. like to, um, to put the best in, you know, because we, we train our asses off. And uh, I, I had a friend in college who was a chiropractor, and the dude was really at, at the top of his echelon. And he was also a very good entrepreneur, and he picked up the phone one day and he said he met this this guy who used to work at FedEx, and um, he lives down the road, and now he does this CBD company. And so I, my ears kind of lit up, and we've developed these products, and, and I can honestly say that they work. Um, for a guy that's put my body through absolute hell throughout the years, Sure. Um, I'm, I'm not going to – I never was – my dad was a physician. He was an OBGYN, so there were always narcotics around the house, right, uh -huh. painkillers yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But I never used, I never really used them because yeah. all they did was mask everything, right? Yep. yep. And um, when they're done, you still got the pain. Oh yeah. And it was really nice to hook up with a company that's that's not only executive wise so on top of their game and mm -hmm. so top top of anybody. I mean, the the stuff that Bill Margaritas did for FedEx was unbelievable. And to have them, him as the head for Hemp to Lab, mm -hmm. and to have it run by scientists, to have all natural products, to have uh, no THC, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, food grade products. I mean, you've got the top doctors, you've got the top scientists, and they're pushing the top clean product. And it's a product that actually works. And so I fell in love with it, man. Yeah. And they asked me to be a part of it. And um, I'm a firm believer that this is the way as opposed to the other way. Oh, I, so, I, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, like, you know, big pharma. And I think we kind of saw a, a really scary glimpse the past, you know, two years with with all the shots and COVID and everything. And, you know, it's it's you know, we don't have to get into that, but uh, it's cool. Where can, where can people find this? Well, it'll be live here, I'd say, in about a week to 10 days. Okay. Um, Hemp Lab has a, uh, a site that they're going to develop and go live here soon. So you got to stay on my social media stuff, Goldberg95 on Instagram. Um, we'll be, I will be putting a video out as to the launch of it very soon. All right, um, Goldberg95. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, Gallant, am I saying it right? Yes, sir. Gallant. Gallant. Uh, Hemp to uh, hemp to lab, coming out uh, CBD stuff. It's immune support. Um, he's got some protein. Got a roll on. Uh, got all the good the best stuff. thing. The best things like for us are that yeah. joint cream. Yep. The joint cream and the and the muscle roll on. I mm -hmm. mean, with I don't know what exactly their uh, combination of ingredients were as far as portions are concerned, but man, sure. the stuff works. Works. It really does. And um, 
for a guy that's that's beat himself up exponentially i mean it's it's nice to be able to finally use a product that's not bad for me and that yeah. actually freaking works so, yeah that's not going to kill your liver not going to kill your liver or kidneys and but it's it's going to work no and you and you know what you trust the people who who developed it mm -hmm. um you like to say or they like to say that it's from seed to sale but they literally they grow the product they refine the product they box the product and it. then they ship so I mean, it's it's no no it's middle a yeah, no middleman no nothing in between. That's awesome. No. So what else you got going on? Oh God, I got my contractors uh, walking outside trying to find me so that we can finish this garage that I embarked upon before <laughs> before COVID hit. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, actually, here let me tell you uh, let me tell you a little funny story really quick before okay. I get off. Yeah, yeah. Um, Talking about being the antithesis of what people think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a 16, we've got a 16 year old boy right now, mm -hmm. and he's in the middle of Texas summer baseball. Okay. So every flipping weekend, we are in the state of Texas, Traveling. but we're playing games, you know, College Station, Rice, you know, so we're an hour away from each other, each yep. game, day, day to day. Mm -hmm. So, long story short, we're in Franklin, Texas. They win the tournament. I walk from the stands to the to the uh, uh, dugout, and I almost step on a bird, a little baby bird. <laughs> and my wife used to have a show on Animal Planet. She's an ex-stunt woman. She's got a heart of gold. Yeah. She's got a zebra, a kangaroo, all this goofy stuff out here in, in, in Texas. I knew, well, first and foremost, I would have gone to hell if I wouldn't have said anything, mm -hmm. just on my own behalf. But I knew that she'd absolutely slaughter me if I didn't mention it to her. Mm -hmm. So I brought it to her attention. We're trying to find a nest. We don't find the nest. Not only do we have a kangaroo with us at these baseball games, but we, <laughs> we now have a freaking bird driving home with us, right? <laughs> so we don't know what kind of bird it is. So we get it home. That's like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. two, two days ago, we get to the point where we feel as parents that the sure. bird was ready to spread his wings. Bird parents, say. got it. Yes, bird parents. <laughs> So the, again, the antithesis of what people think that I am. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, so, I mean, I take a picture of the bird. Uh, I posted on Instagram this morning, mm -hmm. right? It was two days ago when we let this, this guy free. And his yeah. name was Franklin, right? Because <laughs> we were playing in Franklin, Texas. So again, very long story short, I'm getting mm -hmm. ready for all the PR this morning. And I walk by and I swear to God, I hear this bird. Oh, no. And I walk outside and I yell, Franklin, and I'll be damned if 48 hours after I let this bird go, it didn't fly and land right on my head. <laughs> so not only did he take a dump on my head, which uh -huh. I think was he was pissed off because I let him go. Yeah. But uh, then then he he's just sticking around, man. So he's just he's back. So, so you got Franklin. Franklin's back. So you got Franklin's there. Kangaroos. Uh CBD wrestling career. It's all. It's all just a big ass mixing pot. Other than that, and some some automotive shows coming out hopefully soon. Yeah, yeah I'm not doing anything, but you know, I'm just lucky, man. I'm an ex ex NFL guy who didn't make it, and I was in the right place at the right time, surrounded by some great people. So um, uh, and, I, I've and, been very lucky, man, and and a, and a lot of hard work. Well, I appreciate that very yeah. much, man. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time. Everyone, listen, uh, Goldberg95 uh, on Instagram? Yes, sir. Check them out. Um, the CBD products are coming out. They're great. Um, I'm sure we'll probably see you in the ring again before it's all said and done. And maybe, maybe, we'll see. Uh, like Never say. Exactly. But uh, thank you. It's, it, it's been a pleasure. Dude, pleasure's all mine, Jay. You take care of yourself, man. I'll be on with you one of these days when you ask me that. Sounds good. See you, bud.